Hey you guys, welcome back for another year of what I'm choosing for my kids, for the curriculum, um, for year 2023, 2024. That's just wild to me. And you know what? Um, I made a video not too long ago about what you should think about prior to purchasing your um, curriculum. Uh, the picture, the thumbnail for that is right up here. And I really suggest, especially if you are really new to homeschooling or maybe not necessarily really new, like if you know that you have some major things happening this year um, coming up in your homeschool, there's some real critical thinking questions that I ask in this video. And I highly suggest that you go and watch that video, not necessarily maybe before this one, but I think you're gonna get a lot of value out of that video um, before you purchase any of your homeschool curriculum this year. So I just wanted to throw that out there. But I am excited to share with you more homeschool content. So if you are new, welcome. I'm Kimberly. I'm a homeschooling mom of three kids. Um, very, very soon, all of them are going to be 10, 7, and 6. I've been homeschooling since the day they were born, so we've been homeschooling for close to 10 years now. Or if you don't consider yourself a home educator, you taught your kids how to walk and talk and all those things. Um, so I consider myself a homeschooler, a homeschooler since my first child was born. But if that's not you, if you want to count like school years, I've been homeschooling for about six years now and I have loved every minute of it. But you know what? What's going to be different about this video versus the last two years of sharing um, my curriculum with you was I really have been evaluating my homeschool style. I've always had a very um, consistently relaxed homeschool style. Um, and I still have that. And I've just been reading up so much on interest-led learning. And so I'm really going to take like the bull by the horns and um, really do more interest-led homeschooling with my kids. Um, I'm still definitely going to have like my traditional staples. I like to have math and language arts um, as my like my set thing, like my traditional, like following a curriculum. I do like to do that. Um, and then we're also very literary. Um, we do a literary approach in our family. So I love doing lots of read alouds, um, doing notebooking, and then a lot of Socratic discussion about what it is we are learning. And so I'm just going to encourage you to this school year, maybe think outside the box in encouraging more interest-led learning that's just going to spark their interest and then try to build around that. If you are interested in some resources to help you learn more about interest-led learning, um, or some people call it unschooling. I mean, they're kind of the same thing, but they're also kind of different. I have some resources for you. So as far as books go, I have Think Outside the Classroom, A Practical Approach to Relaxed Homeschooling. This is a teeny tiny itty bitty book um, by Kelly Crawford. There she is on the back. This book was referred to me quite some time ago. Um, I bought it on Amazon, I'll link it below. She has a very large family. And this was how her and her husband homeschooled. And it has so much good um, ideas and how you can take your traditional subjects and make them more interest-led, um, relaxed, and just, you know, natural learning. It's a very easy read. There is some websites and things in this book that I've pulled up online that just no longer work, but the just the regular information that's in here is from a very experienced homeschool mom. This is just a really great read. Um, and it just helps you think a little looser instead of being so rigid. And then the other book that um, I listened to and loved was Changing Our Minds by Naomi Fisher. And this was all about 
how you can, um, like the science behind interest-led learning and unschooling and practical approaches that you can do for it. And she's from England, she narrates the book. Um, that was a really cool book. I really enjoyed that. And then if you are into podcasts, um, The Rogue Learner is a really great interest-led unschooling podcast that you can brush up on. She started it, um, I can't think of her name right now, but the the lady that makes The Rogue Learner, she um, started during COVID homeschooling her kids. And um, so start at episode one and then you can, you know, move on through. She hasn't made a new one in a little while, but all the content on there is really good. And then lastly, you guys, before I'm going to, I'm going to give you full flip through of all of my curriculum that I'm going to be using with my kids that I have like book in hand. Um, so I'll be homeschooling fourth grade, second grade, and first grade, though honestly, we homeschool all year around, and so my kids are just where they are. We are relaxed, we are consistent, um, and so when we finish one book, we just start the next book. We take vacations whenever we want. Um, as a family, we take up lots of outside educational opportunities and so you know some of my kids even though they may fall into being in second grade in public school they may be in first grade or third grade depending on whatever subject that they're in and so I'm okay with that um, they're learning all the time and when you when you're homeschooling you're never behind um, because I don't use the public school system as my measuring stick for my kids, I just use them. And so um, I want you to think about some other educational opportunities that you can use outside of your curriculum to make your homeschool more fun, to prevent burnout, because that is very real. And just the monotony of just sit down, do your curriculum, like it just, homeschooling shouldn't be boring and, and just ridiculously, structured in my opinion because it's in your home um, we don't want to recreate school at home so I have a list here of some other ideas to make your homeschool enhance your curriculum enhance your experience bond you and your kids while you're still learning and the first one is local museums please seek out local museums, whether it's just in your hometown or it's in like surrounding bigger areas, check out local museums as much as possible. And within those local museums, um, look for classes. Our local children's museum in Rockford offers classes for homeschoolers. Two classes a month and we try to do every single one of those classes. Um, and it has taught my daughter, my oldest daughter, just so many new and different science concepts and they're all hands-on and they're loads of fun. So try to look into museum classes. The next thing I have written down is a co-op. Um, if a co-op would, what they can be recreational co-ops just for socialization or it could be an academic co-op. It's completely up to you. Um, we are a part of a co-op that meets every Friday during the school, during the traditional school year. They teach science for me um, and then all sorts of other really fun classes. And so getting out once a week, seeing our friends, while also getting some academic benefit has been great. So don't discount a co-op. Also, online classes like OutSchool, um, really don't discount that. Even for your younger kids, um, definitely for your upper elementary through high school, really cool activities are, off are offered online throughout school and there are some other websites that offer classes like that. Really consider adding those things in to your regular homeschool to make it more interesting. And then for your younger kids, consider your local library. Your local library has a lot of great children's activities. And so, you know, whether it's just story time or 
you know, sing songs or whatever. Our local library offers service dogs come in and kids can sit with service dogs and read to them. Um, they have like Lego clubs and they have like night craft classes and all sorts of things. So if you have a good library in your area, even think about going to another town. If you're not in love with your local library, maybe the next town over has a lot better class options. And lastly on my list is consider um, trading with another adult. So if you have another homeschool mom, or even if it's not a homeschool mom, maybe it's just a neighbor next door, um, trade skills with them. Be like, hey, I'll teach your kid piano if you teach my kid how to crochet. Or, you know, maybe we can meet up once a week as a family and you can take my kids and teach them how to paint or do an art whatever with them. And I'll take your kids and we'll do cooking. I did that for quite a while with a friend of mine. I taught her daughter cooking skills while she was in my basement teaching my daughter how to play piano. So don't discount trading um, classes or skills with other parents. Look who came to visit. Can you tell them your name? Eli. This is Eli. And how old are you, Eli? You're five. Are you going to be six soon? Are you in kindergarten? Yeah. Yes. So next year, do you know what grade you're going to be in? First grade. You hold one finger, first grade. Yep. And what are we learning right now in our school? Words. Words. And how did you what with those words? I don't know. Read them. You're going to be shy. Yeah, Eli's learning how to read. I'll share that curriculum with you because it's probably one you haven't heard of. So wave goodbye. Bye. Okay, you guys, I am now going to pull out my curriculum and give you a full flip through of what I have. First, I'm going to start with what my kids all do together, um, and then we'll move into individual subjects for each child. So first, I want to show you Give Your Child the World, Raising Globally Minded Kids One Book at a Time by Jamie Martin. I showed this in last year's video because I had the full intent of doing geography with my kids. Now, when you do history, you can easily throw in geography and I do that, but I really had the full intention, right? As homeschool moms, maybe we buy all this stuff and then we never get to it or we get to it the following year, or the year after we all struggle to, right? And then, or you put so much on your plate that you realize very shortly into your school year that, uh, yeah, we are not gonna be able to get all this done. Doesn't matter how we schedule it, loop it, you know, block it, whatever. It's just not gonna work. And you know what? I'm gonna wait until my kids are a little early, older. And so I'm gonna give this another whirl this year, you guys. This is basically a book with book lists in it broken up by country continent um, and also what I really like by age group so it's going to give you books and titles um, global perspective and you know like Asian books for kids six to eight and using my local library so you're not spending a lot of money uh, Asian books for kids 10 to 12 and so on and so you can get books that are appropriate for each child and then you can learn about individual continents um, and then it can get into you know individual countries and whatnot but this is a pretty hefty book and it is it has been really excellent so this is how I plan on doing geography and so I'm just gonna ask my kids hey what continent do you want to you know, learn about. And they're going to say, I want to learn about Africa. And so I'm going to pull up all of the books that are about Africa. And I'm just going to get several from the library. We're going to read through them during the day. Maybe I'll go online and print out a map of Africa. And if the book is talking about a specific country within Africa, we're going to color it. We're going to label it. And so that's just very engaging learning through story. So I'll link this book below if you would like it. But this is how we are going to be doing geography this year. Cross our fingers. 
hopefully. All right, next up, my kids and I, we all do history together. And you know what? We invite my sister-in-law and my nieces over that live very close and another girlfriend of mine with her four almost newly five kids every single Wednesday and we do early American history. We're still working through this. So we only do it once a week on Wednesdays with two other families that are joining us. And this is through Beautiful Feet Books. And the te this is the teacher's guide. It is beautiful. Um, it is sturdy. And what I love is that it has pictures in here um, you know, for the kids to look at. And then the lessons are really short. It tells you, I get a whole box of books. I will go through the whole box of books in a second, but you're gonna have your lesson. It'll tell you what book you need to read from, the pages, um, questions to ask the kids to make sure they were listening, they can narrate back to you. And then we use regular notebooks. I didn't bring it upstairs, but we just use regular notebooks. And occasionally we'll do some notebooking about what we have learned. And so we're still working through this. We are currently on lesson 39 and we are, we are on the pilgrims. So with this early American history, it's going, and this is elementary, early for the early elementary, like first through third grade. But we also have kids ranging from kindergarten all the way up into like sixth or seventh grade doing this with us. The stories that are offered with Beautiful Feet books, they are so rich. So even though most of the kids are older than first through third grade, they are still learning a ton. Um, and the, the books are not for little kids, like watered down. Um, and so here are some of the books that are offered in the curriculum. They may be short, but they are living books full of so much deep and insightful knowledge and facts while allowing the kids to um, relate to the people that are in history. And that's what I love. Um, allowing them to learn about the real people, what their lives were like, the situations um, they had to live through without any boring, dry facts. I mean, they're in there, but it's wrapped up in the story of their lives. And that's what I really, really like about Beautiful Feet books. And so, and this isn't even all of them because we've gone through a few of them. These are all the ones we haven't gotten to yet. <laughs> and so the way Beautiful Feet will work is you can do two lessons a week and get done with this in, I believe, a year, like one whole year or you can do, do it three to four days a week and you can get done with it like in a semester. So I like to just stretch it out. We just do it once a week because we do it with other families. But if I didn't do it with other families, I'd probably be doing it twice a week. And so we'd get done with this in one year. Now I will say Beautiful Feet Books is an investment. Like the early elementary, um, it's like over $200 to purchase that whole thing, but you are building your home library with these books. And to be honest, I hope and pray if it's God's will that my children will homeschool their children one day. And I would love to pass down these books to them. And so that is definitely my intent. So I don't, it doesn't bother me that I spent over $200 for this because for one, I'm using it for all three of my kids and they're getting a great history education. So if you take that divided by three, you know, you think of it that way. And then it's taking us, you know, a year or longer to get through it all. So I'm not making this hefty 200 plus dollar investment every single year. Okay, so I'm going to flip the camera around and you know, so you can see what the books look like inside. Mia's handwriting is the level three from The Good and the Beautiful. 
Um, I will say, I feel that this is a little too advanced for her. She does really like it though, being that she's only six years old. She'll be seven here in a couple of months. She was so excited to start the cursive. Cursive does start in level three, which would be approximately third grade, but she's just finishing first grade. And so I'm trying to slow her down in her handwriting, specifically for the cursive. So in the level three, it's gonna continue on with the print and you know some tracing copy work, but then they slowly start introducing um, the cursive, which I like. Free. It will talk about um, alphabetical order, which is great. You know, one of those um, little skills kids can learn at a young age, which I love. They love the mazes. And so like when I say I feel that this book is a bit advanced for her, you know, she'll have to do this copy work. We usually make a noun plural by adding S, but if we add ES, the words that end with S, H, C, H, Z, X, or S. So we haven't even gotten to this yet. Like, and she can't even read any of, I mean, she can read boxes, but in classes, but she can't read a lot of these words, but she's writing them down anyway. So I would prefer her to be able to actually read that without much struggle and then write it, but that's not the case for her right now. And so she started this a couple months ago and she'll just do one side of the page, just like my daughter will do. And so I just kind of want her to slow down a little bit. to write, like, I love my family all in cursive here. I just don't feel that she'll be there yet. Maybe she'll shock me, but you know, even here, they're gonna have them start writing one word. And then you have your certificate at the end of every book. Finishing up this right now, we're only, um, we're about halfway through this. Again, I am not rushing my kids and not pushing them really hard with reading. I have absolutely no worries when they leave my home, they're not going to be amazing readers. But we are using the Good and the Beautiful's Language Arts program. If you do not know, you can get all of this for 100% free off of their website. You can download it. Um, it's a very, very large file but you can get the booster reading cards. You can get these easy readers, um, all of these books um, for free along with the textbook that teaches your kids how to read for free on their site. All you're gonna have to do is print it all out. And I will show you in a little bit, I have printed out other levels of this. Um, and this program is definitely going to teach your children how to read and that is what I use it for. Um, so right now, my daughter is on lesson 47. In her book, there are apps that you can use to make this more interesting when it tells you to use it. But um, I always like the good and the beautiful and how they've taught um, kids how to read. It, it's been very successful in our home, as well as teaching them about art appreciation and how to write. And we have just really loved this program. It has never been overwhelming. And I just think it's really sweet. Now, the reason why I'm not using this with my son is because I know him very well and he would just honestly, he would really hate having to like look at these pictures and get into depth and he's like, I just wanna do it. I just want the meat and spit out the bones where the girls love like all these little activities like this. Now, maybe your sons will be different, um, but, I know my son is not gonna wanna look at this painting 
and be like, can you tell me, you know, like the light and the shadow and this, that and whatever. And we are gonna do picture study in our table time, but it's just not gonna be wrapped up in their literature. And so um, every child is different and this has worked amazing for my girls. And so we are only on lesson 47 in this book and I'm perfectly fine with that. We're gonna be working on this all summer long. But what I really love is the booster cards. And what I will say about this, my son Eli will be doing all the booster cards through level three. So there's booster card A, B, and C. Um, through the good and the beautiful because you could honestly teach your children to read solely using their 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 booster cards and you won't have to do the reinforcement of the activities because all this book is is reinforcing everything that's learned in the booster cards and so you have your child do five to ten minutes of booster cards until they have it mastered and then you're going to do a page, a lesson in this book. And it doesn't say like, do this page here and there. It doesn't do that. So you can move super fast through the booster cards. And it says in there, like, don't hold your child back. Um, do the booster cards as fast as you want to do them. And sometimes we only do booster cards and we don't even use the book. And that's why we're so far behind because we are doing booster cards. And she never, she was burnt out. She was already tired. Her mind was tired after we did the booster cards. And then we didn't want to do the worksheets. And so some days I'll only do booster cards and we got our reading lessons in for the day, right? And then the following day we'll do a whole lesson or maybe two lessons in the book. And we'll just kind of go back and forth. Again, um, I'm not going to push my kids too hard in the reading because when they're developmentally ready, they're not gonna have a problem learning how to read. And so I really like their booster cards. This was obviously purchased from the good and the beautiful and it's all binded, all nice. And I'll show you my own binding of level two of the booster cards. But this is the level K or level A booster cards and this, this resource alone, which you can get the cards and the books, because sometimes at the bottom it'll say, now read book number 17, Beth Loves Math, and you'll pull that out and they'll correspond. Um, you don't have to do the booster cards, um, or you have to do the, the book pack if you don't want. Again, you could use Bob Books. If you have Bob Books, you can just do that as well, or use books from your library. So, there are other ways. They come with little stickers that you can put on here if they've mastered it. I personally don't because I'm passing it down from child to child. So I don't want, yeah, I just don't use the stickers in there. But yeah, so we use the book, we use this, and then it comes with its own book pack. But you can get this totally for free. Um, download it to your computer. It's a huge file, but again, you can print it out and use it that way, or you can just buy, buy it all bound and all fancy like this right from the company. So my daughter's math, she will be finishing level one here that you just saw with Eli. My, my youngest two are only 14 months apart, and so they're gonna be pretty close in a lot of their, their stuff. She's gonna be moving to math lessons for a living education for from Master Books level two here this summer because we homeschool year around. And yeah, we just like it that way. And so this is level two. The first um, like six weeks, I wanna say four to six weeks of this program is complete review from the book prior to it. And so you can just rip out if you want, you don't have to rip it out. Um, just know that you know over the summer, if you use this program, your child will be getting review from the book prior to it before moving on to new concepts. And again, what I love, it's not overwhelming. Every lesson starts with a story that will 
explain the math concepts in most cases. Yep, and now we're starting to get into money. Even in odds. Finding perimeter. They have all the manipulatives and everything you're gonna need in the back of the book, which I really love. I've laminated some of these sheets. It's been really helpful. Oh, Mr. Measure is really cool. We've made him with my older daughter. Um, I've laminated all that so they can understand, you know, how many cups make a pint and things like that. That's really fun. All right, so for my daughter, she is doing the good and the beautiful. So after she finishes her level A, we're going to be doing the cards B. So I printed this out myself. I did this all on heavy duty card stock. Um, and this is how it printed out. This is not how I thought it was going to print out. Um, like some of the pictures are missing on the books. Um, and these are just gonna be humongous. Um, so they didn't quite print out the way I thought they were going to. But at the end of the day, I'm not gonna spend any more money on this. Cause like some of the pictures, yeah, it didn't print quite, quite right. So if my daughter wants, she's gonna read this and I'm gonna be like, okay, now I feel like flip the book over. You wanna look at the picture on this side. And so I totally understand this is going to be a bit wonky with the way it printed. Um, of course, like I pressed print and I didn't check on it to see if it was printing, you know, correctly, like in book form. So all the pictures are upside down. Um, but it's every single one of these easy readers. So you could buy the box like this and just get booster box B, but I have them all printed here, every single one. And so we're just gonna go through um, all of these books. There's 20 of these books um, for the, the next level. So this would be level like first grade. And then here are the booster cards. And so if you buy it from the Good and the Beautiful, it's gonna look like this. But these printed correctly, the way they should, you know, they tell you how to use them and things you need to master. So we're just gonna do this for my daughter for continuing to learn how to read. But what I'm doing differently with her once we're done with this previous level, I am not going to use the workbook that goes along with this. Um, I don't feel for my daughter who catches on to reading extremely quickly, I do not think she needs those worksheet pages that take her five to 10 minutes to reinforce what she's learning in these booster cards. So to save time, paper, money to print, or to just buy it straight from the company. I am just, we're just gonna do the booster cards, you know, repeat them as much as we need to. And we're gonna be sitting together, snuggling on the couch, and we are going to be um, reading books from the library, the easy readers. We're just gonna be doing that for her reading. And as far as her writing, we will obviously have other things that we'll be doing for her writing um, with our notebooking and things like that that we do for all subjects. And so my focus is to teach her how to read first. And I do love this program. I love their booster cards. And I already have her next level printed out. And even though her easy readers got wonky, I have tons of easy readers um, between Bob Books, the library, and some Usborn uh, books.
So yes, if you're gonna print out this program for free from their website, make sure that if you're gonna print out their easy reader books that they're going to print out the correct way. Otherwise, every other page is gonna be upside down. But I love that they redid their easy readers. I have some from previous editions and their illustrations are really pretty um, on, these, on these new ones. And so this will be my daughter who is going into second grade. She's going to be doing this. So I'm really excited to share this resource with you guys. I've been um, like stalking the fun school thinking tree journals for quite some time. Um, there is a great Facebook group um, called Thinking Tree um, Fun Schooling. And there is a website as well. Again, it'll be all linked below. And it's a mother of 15 kids. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Um, and she lives in Hawaii and she makes these amazing um, self-directed, very self-directed, interest-led, um, like kind of unschooling journals for kids. And this is how she homeschooled all 15 of her kids. Um, and she's still continuing to homeschool them today. Um, and they come in these really amazing themes. I have several to show you. This is the one that's gonna be for Mia, who is six, soon to be seven. And she loves princesses and she loves ballerinas. Now, I wanna tell you, if you are going to purchase these, if your children are younger, like mine, you know, like my five-year-old, six-year-old, I would even say all the way through like eight years old and under, you may, depending on the journal, need to be really involved, whether it's reading with them and kind of walking them through as if you are an experienced homeschooler, those younger kids, need, you need to be by their side. And so, um, what this is, is documenting everything that you are learning about. With, in this particular one, it's for princesses and ballerinas, um, 180 homeschooling lessons and activities. And so, this isn't going to tell you what you're going to be learning, you are going to document what you're learning in them. And I think that's the biggest misconception um, of these books. So like some people absolutely love these. You'll read the reviews and then some people are like, this is really dumb. But if you don't understand the, what this is actually for, it's to document everything that your children are learning in a really creative way. Um, and they also have dyslexia fonts on them. So if your ch child struggles with dyslexia, these are all printed in fonts that are easier for people with dyslexia. So it says this curriculum covers reading, handwriting, creative writing, spelling, classical music, mathematics, science, history, art, drawing, um, library skills, unit studies, and logic. Now, and then they can fill out name and date and whatnot, and they can color all over this. So the instructions is your child, because this is self-directed, is going to it says draw five things that you want to learn about. So they're gonna draw pictures, right? Because your young children are not gonna be able to write very well. And if they wanna write, have them, you know, go for it, have them write. Otherwise, draw pictures. And the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the library or a bookstore and you're going to get books, one or several, on whatever they wanna learn about. This is where when self-directed kids, if they're highly motivated and they wanna learn about animals, just because this says princesses on it, but my daughter wants to learn all about animals, that is totally fine. Um, so don't get bogged down of the theme of the book and your child wanting to learn about airplanes or space or something like that. So don't even like worry about that. Um, so you're gonna go to the library, you're gonna get books, you're gonna bring home a stack of books of at least five interesting books about these topics. Again, don't get hung up if it says five, just get some that you want. And choose some that have diagrams, instructions, and illustrations, and you're gonna want colored pencils and things like that. So, you know, you can write down the titles here and whatnot, and you're gonna sit with your child, you know, choose a new book anytime, flip to the back, read more books, and just read with them about what they are interested in, 
okay? So that's what this is all about. And there's lots of art and logic in here. They can sit quietly and do this. You can have them learn how to write the date, what you're gonna do today, how are they feeling. I love these logic puzzles. My kids love these. Um, they can trace and color. And then reading time. Ask your teacher to help you decide how many books to read from each. And you can write how many pages. You can write about or draw about what you're reading. Um, science and nature walk, nature journal. So you are living your life and you are using these pages to document what you are doing at home. So the big takeaway that I got from a homeschool convention this year, like literally just two weeks ago from filming this video, is notebooking. This is basically notebooking with just pre-done pages instead of a blank page. If your child is reading about anything they're interested in and they can draw a picture or write a couple sentences or write a paragraph if they're older about what they have read, they're moving that information from the short-term memory into the long-term memory and they are learning something. And if you are traditionally schooled and you're not used to this approach, um, this could seem like they're not producing anything much and they're not learning, but the opposite is, is, it's exactly the opposite. So spelling time, write three spelling words from these pictures. Okay, so they can do that. More drawing. Movie time, watch an educational movie. Draw the scenes. Math time, um, you know, if you're using a curriculum, you could just write a few problems in here. And you could just literally have them do one or two pages a day in these journals. They're not going to be doing this journal maybe every single day, or maybe they are. Um, it's completely up to what you want. You can say, oh, you are five years old. I want you to do four to five of these pages today. And so it just repeats. Um, so I think you get the GIF. So creative writing. This is where if you have a younger child, they are telling you a short story and you are writing it down for them. And it's just gonna continue on. This is just a really fun way to document, to journal what your kids are interested in and what they are wanting to do. So this is going to be for my six, soon to be seven year old, uh, between the first, first and second grade. So I got this. All right, you guys, so this is per Progressive Phonics. This is a 100% free resource online that I print out and put into a binder for my little guy. Um, he doesn't care that his binder is pink, it is just what I have handy here at home. And this program has worked so well for my son. Um, I have used a different program with both my daughters. And you know, I'm all about customizing the learning experience for each child. And so for him, I knew Eli probably wasn't gonna like the good and the beautiful. And so um, I found Progressive Phonics and I've really liked it for him. It is very gentle. And so you are going to have these word cards, right? And they teach it through word families. I print out two, I put one set, I tape it with painter's tape to his wall at, in his bedroom. And then I um, take another card and I print it out and I put it on the wall in our kitchen. And so whenever he's in his room, he can practice his reading whenever he wants. And then we have um, the words again up in the kitchen where he can practice as well. So I print every, these out twice. And so eh, we have all of these words and whatnot. They give you the, the little like, teacher's guide. It runs the same every single time. And so it tells you what to do every day, what words to put on there, the little stories you're gonna be reading that they provide, little activity sheets, and then there's handwriting. I have printed out the handwriting. I'll show you that in a little bit. 
um, but I don't follow along with the exact lessons. We just do handwriting in our morning table time, like our morning basket. And so I don't follow along with the handwriting on here, but I do the activity sheets, the reading, and whatever the word wall flashcard is of the day. So I print it out. He's on book two. There's several books. So whenever you finish, we finish one book. So like the book one would be the short letter A words. Um, and now we're working on short letter E's. And so they give you all of this. And then I have it binded where I printed the activity pages where it just reinforces the words that they've learned. And what I really like about fast phonics or progressive phonics is the illustrations are really fun for boys. Um, they're not feminine at all. And so they, this literally takes us five maybe, ever so maybe, um, 10. So this was from book one, like the short letter A. Um, these are just some of the things he's already done. We are more than halfway through the short letter E. So we've been doing this for a few months now and my son has really liked it. And then I put the books in the back here. Um, again, you just print it all out or you can just do it right from an iPad and you don't have to print out the pages and save you even more money on paper and ink. And so it tells you, you know, the word family that you're gonna be doing. You usually read three stories. And again, what I love, we parents read what's in black, the kids read what's in red. And I like the illustrations and the stories are, goofy and funny and cute for kids like slimy worms like kids love reading about that um and so he really loves reading the big words he always feels like he's reading little hints if you feel like your kids need some hints um and you go through and you're gonna read the stories that go with your with the words that you're learning. And I have just put all these in sheet protectors because it makes everything easier. And today when we did a lesson, he wanted to read like four books of these. And he was like, let's keep going, let's keep going. And he just really loved it. And you can just repeat as much as you want. My printer was running out of ink, so I was kind of just doing that myself. And this has just been a very simple but very effective way to start him because he's only five and I do not want to make the mistakes I made with my daughter in pushing her to read too early and ruining her self-esteem and reading and not creating a positive experience with reading, right? You always make your mistakes on your first child. So then when you finish all these stories as you're doing, you know, using your little teacher's guide, I mean, the next book I'm gonna print out is gonna be book three for short eyes, and we'll just keep, keep it all going. So this is progressivephonics.com. I will link it below. This is what we're using for my son, and he really, really likes it. So the handwriting that I have chose for my son is from Progressive Phonics. This is 100% free. You just wanna print it out yourself. Um, I did have him do the Good and the Beautifuls pre-K, like doodles and all of that, but I felt for him that moving him through, so he's done like the preschool and the kindergarten from the Good and the Beautiful, and I just felt like it was moving a bit too fast for him. And so what I like about Progressive Phonics' um, handwriting is it can go along with the teacher's guide, which is great. I don't do that. I just have him do either one side or both sides every day, whatever he's feeling. And it goes along with the lessons and it's just very, very simple. And it goes along with the words that he's learning. And I printed out every single handwriting practice sheet and whatnot. I have a whole nother like chunk of papers um, for him. So we are doing this for his handwriting. I will say we've been working on this for a little while now. 
and he feels that he is ready for the good and the beautiful. So I did order him the level uh, one of the good and the beautiful and we're gonna just kind of be going back and forth between this progressive phonics that I already have printed and the good and the beautiful level one. I just haven't gotten the level one yet in the mail. But what I just really like is that these are all the words that we are learning right now. And it's totally free. It's great practice. And it has worked really, really well for him. Also for my little guy and also for my daughter who's going into second grade, we really love Bob books for just easy readers that they can sit down and read themselves to just reinforce um, their reading skills. And you know, my little guy who's five, he can easily read, um, they come in three levels in one box. And so the, let's see, like the green ones are the easiest ones and then it'll go up to the red ones and then it'll go up to the purple ones. So um, my daughter and my son can all read you know, from the same box because they go up in difficulty. The Bob books have been around forever and these are just really great, easy readers that you can get from the library. So you don't have to own these by any means, but when you want them and when you need them, it's great to have a, just a couple boxes on hand. All right, next up we have the math for my son Eli. It's level one. We are currently halfway through this book and I've never used any other math program but Masterbooks' Math Lessons for a Living Education. All my children love it. No one's cried over this math. Um, maybe like in a new concept because they just weren't understanding, but not because they hated it. Um, my kids love to do math first in the day. Shockingly, everyone's like, don't start the day with math. My kids want to start the day with math. And so um, we've never changed programs. I've never looked elsewhere. Um, I would say personally, there is a level K if you have a younger child. In my opinion, level K is more preschool than it is kindergarten. So if you do have an actual kindergartner, like a five or six year old, start with level one because the skills in this particular book, it's going to start with, you know, learning the numbers zero through nine. Um, what I do love about this program though, is every lesson starts with a little story that builds on itself. And there's two twins, Charlotte and Charlie, and it's all about them learning math by their grandma and grandpa on, on like summer vacation and learning it through the farm and all the different tasks and how math is everywhere. And so what's funny is that my girls loved me reading these stories, but my son doesn't want anything to do with me reading these stories. He just wants to get straight to the math concept. And so you don't need the story in order to learn the math concept. So I just want to throw that out there. But if you have a child that loves to be read to, um, go ahead and read the story and then you get into the math concept and every day we'll say you know day one um, you know just do this and so on and so forth and so what I also really like about this map is that it's not busy like I can look at this page I know exactly what it is I need to do and I it's just doesn't have tons and tons of things happening on it. And so I don't personally feel overwhelmed when I look through this math. I almost went with the Good and the Beautiful's math years and years ago when it first came out. And I got, I bought it, I opened it up and I was just instantly overwhelmed with all of the design and the, um, all the writing, like what the teacher has to say and what the child should be saying and all this stuff, that I got really overwhelmed with their math and I sent it right back. I just turned it around and I sent it right back. And so um, what I love about Masterbooks is it's truly, truly simple. And so as you can see, I, I would say this is easily a kindergarten for level one and what they need to do. And then I'll skip over here. My son is now on our little page. 
and he's now learning addition in the middle of the book. Let me skip through. He will get to subtraction, skip counting. Um, there's also copy work in here if you want your child to do more handwriting. You can kind of combine your handwriting with your math by doing this book as well. Counting by tens. And so we've just, it's been very gentle. My kids always feel like they're winning with math and I love it. They also start learning how to tell time um, in level one. And my daughter, who's currently in first grade, we're gonna be finishing this book in a week or so, and she can tell time great, and she's understood all of the math concepts. Now, these are the fun schooling journals I got for my son, Eli. Um, and I'm really excited to do this with him. I have no idea if he's going to be really accepting of the fun schooling journals or not because he's really hit or miss with like coloring and stuff. He doesn't always like to do it. So I have two of them here. And fun schooling for beginners, a do-it-yourself journal. And there are other ones for different ages. You can check out their website. Um, but what this one is about, it's all about animals and the covers just feel like so buttery and soft. I love it. So he can write his name, his age, his birthday, and it says instructions. Let your child freely use the pages that they like best each day. If something is too hard, help and be an example. Play music or sing songs while your child is working in this book. So you're not saying you're doing this one or you're doing that one, they're freely picking. And so part one, letters, numbers, tracing, and coloring. And I don't know if he'll like coloring that or not. And I'm not gonna worry about it. This is just gonna be like a quiet activity. You know, do the maze, find all the number ones, and they have pictures for the instructions up here, which is great. So they say trace it and then you can paint it, so. So this would be a book for a child, maybe three, I believe it's like three to six years old. I just love how they can figure out the instructions here. These are those dyslexia fonts. Um, and so really helps kids with dyslexia. So this is gonna be a great quiet activity book for him. You can have him do it in the car or if you have like a quiet reading time, they could have an audio book going while they are also doing their little book here. Sticker pages, draw your family, your favorite animals, draw your room, your house, your face, <laughs> favorite foods. I'm excited to use this with my little guy. And then the other one I have for him is the Count and Color Just for Boys, ages three to six, math for beginners. And he's actually pretty advanced in math. And so this will probably just be, again, more of like a quiet time um, activity book for him. Draw one of your favorite things, two. Getting into writing the word, the number words, tracing. Coloring. 
color and count. Silly dog. Again, this would be something fun to do in the car or while an audio book is going. So these are the two fun schooling journals that I'm doing with Eli this year. All right, and for my oldest daughter who will be, I don't know, we don't really do grades. I know I keep saying like going into fourth grade, but she's not in public school, so she's just at where she's at. She was in public school, I think, because she has a late birthday. She'd be going into, I think, fourth grade is just what, what I'm gonna say. Um, she's on the level five of math. Um, she's definitely a bit ahead. She's very math-minded. Um, this particular program, Lessons for Living Education, or Math Lessons for Lig Living Education, that goes up to level six. But the level six requires a teacher's guide, and this is a very affordable math program. It's like $40 for the year for this whole book. Um, master, buy directly from Master Books. I feel that they have the best prices, and then they offer uh, points. If you have an account with them, you know, you just make an account and they offer points to get money off with the more you purchase directly through them instead of like a third party like Rainbow Resources or like Christian Book. And so um, she's going into level five. The level six I know comes with a teacher's guide and it's just significantly more expensive. So we may be looking into a new math program for her after level five. But level five, again, the beginning is going to be all review of the previous books she has already done. And so the first few weeks will just be review, which never hurts. And then you can really understand if, you know, if they understood a concept or not. You know when you get into these older grades, all the font gets a lot smaller. I'll be perfectly honest, math is not my forte, and so uh, we'll be seeing how much I'm struggling <laughs> as I'm reteaching myself all the things. they give you all of you know your manipulatives and of course all the answers are always in the back so if you can trust your child with having this in the back you can leave it otherwise you can rip it out because I use it all the time very helpful so my oldest daughter is working on the good and the beautiful's handwriting level six we've been using the good and the beautiful's handwriting um, for our entire homeschool journey, and I just really, really like it. Um, handwriting goes up to level seven. I will say, even though my daughter is only going to be, um, you know, approximately fourth grade, um, she has started doing cursive when she was like five years old because she wanted to. So again, you can move as fast or as slow as, um, your child needs to be. She is way advanced in handwriting um, and she loves doing cursive. And we have enjoyed this book the entire time. We've never switched to anything else. What I like about the Good and the Beautiful's handwriting is, um, is a lot of copy work is done from poems. What I don't particularly like though with, with their poems, their poems are great and I like that she does the copy work. It's just, it's written like in old English with like these and thous and things. And so, I mean, it's good that they're exposed to that, but sometimes, um, you know, the poems don't like flow off the tongue that great just because it's not, we don't speak that way anymore. And so 
She just started this book not too long ago. They also will teach in the younger grades some of grammar concepts as well with their um, their handwriting. And then I always like at the end, they do some type of drawing activity typically. So my kids will do just one side per day in the morning with our table time. And so this is level, what level was this? This was, this was level six and it only goes up to level seven. And so she'll be done with handwriting at least formal handwriting books here very, very soon. Now for my daughter's language arts, we use Brave Writer, but for some reading reinforcement for her, because I think she has a tiny bit of dyslexia, um, we're just continuing to reinforce her reading and her reading practice. So of course, this is the booster card C for her. And so I'm just gonna have her go through what's a little bit different about once you get into level C um, is, you know, she's gonna go through all her booster cards. So we're gonna be doing that because this does get into more difficult, you know, things. So she's gonna be doing her booster cards. I print it out, but the booster cards will say to read from these books. Now you can get these books printed by the good and the beautiful, um, but they're shared readers with the parent. And so the child is going to read that section which reinforces whatever the card is in here. So you're always gonna be doing these in tandem. And so the student will read that while the parent reads this. And it always goes that way. So this is going to be something you're doing together with your child, um, which my daughter and I will love to snuggle up together and and do this. So these books are going to have lots of snuggle time, but you will have to use, um, you know, the, whatever concept they're learning here, it'll say now go into whatever book. And there's two books, cause these are long, these are long chapter books. And then Wesley and the Wolves and the same thing you'll read here. And then, you know, it has like a little underlined of the phonics concept. Child to read, then you'll read. This all on cardstock, so it's really heavy duty. And all three of my kids will go through this. And then, so when she finishes these booster cards with these two books, I'm going to have her do some reading from this level two shared reader from the good and the beautiful. She doesn't like to read chapter books yet because she still likes the pictures. And um, when she sees just a page like this, where it's just solid words, she just shuts down and gets overwhelmed. And so, you know, she'll do a lot of graphic novels. We do a ton of audiobooks in our house. Um, and whatnot, and so we'll just sit down and you know we'll do like 10 minutes of shared reading with this after she's finished that. So that's what I plan on doing this coming school year for my daughter's reading, uh, practice and language arts, and then we're going to be doing Brave Writer. So Brave Writer is a completely digital product and you will get PDFs emailed to you when you purchase them. And what I love about it is that you can use it for all of your kids. We're currently using the Dart. And with the Dart, it is, they go in levels of ages. And so with the Dart, I think it's for approximately like eight to 10 year olds, but you can definitely simplify it for younger kids or you can make it harder for older kids. Um, they're dart arrows and boomerangs. You know, they're all age-based, but they're still going to learn 
all of their grammar and everything through high quality literature. And so for this particular one, it's about the mouse and the motorcycle. And so you're going to read the book out loud or you're gonna listen to it on an audio. I like to do audio as much as possible so I don't have to do more read alouds during the day. And I literally just every day, Eden will write out the little copywork passage. And then I just read verbatim, like a page or two from the manual here. And it tells you what, you know, what grammar they're going to learn while looking at the copywork, while they're doing the copywork, proper nouns, capital letters, commas, um, and then they can find it and do it within the literature. They're hearing high quality literature and, you know, there's spelling in there. That's how my kids learn how to do spelling is through copy work. They teach you how to teach the passage. So you can just put it into your own words if you want to, but I personally just read it straight from the page and then elaborate on it. And also what I think is really cool is that there will be at the end different writing ideas that your kids can do um, at the end of each book. So they're going to learn grammar, they're going to learn spelling through all this copy work, through high quality literature, and then they will get activities and really fun ways to use that grammar um, to maybe do a really fun writing project. And so through there, it's about four weeks long to get through a book. And then at the end, you can do book parties and they give you all sorts of ideas to have a big party, you know, using the theme of the book. So this is just a really, really fun way to grow amazing writers and teach them the grammar concepts um, that they need um, without being really boring and dry. So we've been doing Brave Writer for two years now. And I like to buy the singles. So you can buy like a full year that is 10 books and, you know, their their little PDF files. Or you can just pick a book that you like and maybe they have, um, you know, a lesson already on it and you can just go that route. So and then you can just keep passing them down to all your kids if you have a big family and then you're not repurchasing. And so Brave Writer has always been a hit in our house. So for Eden, I have three journals here. Now I will say with these journals, you may not get, you could go through an entire journal in one school year, or maybe you have multiple journals going um, at a time, and they're just gonna get filled up when they get filled up. Um, again, it's completely your choice. I bought this big one two years ago for her, all about animals, because my daughter absolutely loves animals. And um, she was seven years old and she was not ready for this journal. And so we started it, I can show you here. Um, and also, I wasn't, so she was six and a half actually. This was 2020 when I bought this for her. And I just wasn't far enough along in my education and my understanding of self-directed learning and what that was going to entail for me as the parent um, in helping her use this journal. I thought this was going to be more of like an independent thing, but she was way too young to do this independently and that was completely my fault. And so we just took this away, but it's also done in um, the dyslexia fonts um, to help. And so again, you would find out what animals they want to learn about. We'd go to the library and get a stack of books because this is a literary, a library-based fun schooling journal. And you would just, you know, choose six books. You could, you know, put it on, write what they are, fun facts about me, and then she would fill this in. So she started like the first two and then I just quickly um, filled them out for her because her hand was getting tired and um, so this is where, when she started this at six and a half, I, I think it's great that she wrote two of these and then realistically, I need to be the one. She could narrate back to me 
and I would be the one filling this in and maybe she would just be coloring the picture. Um, she loved doing, you know, number searches. Draw a wild animal, tigers, draw a pet, that was our dog, um, June 8th. She read one book. Let's see, ask your teacher to help decide how many books to read. One book. Um, male leopards can weigh up to 100 pounds. So she wrote that in there. She did try to make this. I remember that. Um, story writing time. I remember when she was doing this, it's, you know, look at this picture and then try to write a story from it. And so she did that. Remember, she was six, years, six and a half. So that was a really good effort for her. Coloring, and then it's going to start with that cursive again, um, and then practicing it down here. Animal tracks. So everything is just gonna be, because this is all about animals, it's going to be animal-based, but if your child loves animals, but today they wanna learn about outer space, you can just do all of this with their outer space books. It's just gonna have a lot of animal pictures in here. And so spelling time, they're choosing the words that they wanna learn how to spell. They can make comic strip with it. Um, if you're learning about history, you can get this book you can get this journal out and you can write whatever you learned about science and history that day. It doesn't have to be something they've chosen. If you already have a curriculum that you're like, I already have a history curriculum that I do with my kids, I could just have them journal that down here. If you're doing science with your kids, you can just have them journal it here. This is just a book to document what you are teaching or what they're learning about. Um, whether it's a YouTube video or them reading it themselves. Geography, field trips, which is great. And it basically repeats itself. 10 words they wanna do. They can research about raccoons and write some things down. Movie time, math, story time. So yeah. This is a great way to document their learning and it just repeats itself. So it's just a really creative way to put down what they're learning. So I think you get the gist of this library based journaling method. I thought this book was just really cute. Thinking Tree um, Fun Schooling Books, they go on sale all the time. When you go to their website and you start looking through all of this, um, it directs you straight to Amazon to purchase it. And so I will link all of the journals that I currently have with my kids down below. Um, but they use Amazon as their way of getting their journals to you. So this one is teach your child 100 words to read, write, spell, and draw an animal coloring book, which I knew um, Eden would love. And it says master 10 common words that every child should know how to read and spell by the age of 10. And my daughter's going to be 10 this year. So um, and spelling is not a good strong suit for her. And we use copy work as um, a way of spelling. It's also something that is, it's a completely different part of the brain from reading, spelling and writing. And so um, I just like different approaches to spelling rather than like lists. And so it says the instructions for parents, read each poem four times, pointing to each word as you read it. Many of the words are sight words that do not follow rules of phonics. The child must be able to recognize each word visually. Ask the child to repeat after you for the third or fourth readings. The goal is for the child to memorize the rhyme. Provide the child with colorful gel pens and one black gel pen. Help the child to understand the instructions on each page. Sometimes the child will color the spelling word, write the missing word, color the picture, or draw the missing part of an animal. Sometimes the child will draw the animal's foot or, or and have tap. And so you're gonna read it several times, they're gonna read it, and then they're going to color it. 
maybe that's just day one. Here's the same poem, maybe on day two. Read it, they read it a couple times. Also has like little notes down here. Read each poem one or more time and ask the child to point and say and to color the words with gel pens. Day three, slightly different way and then they're filling in. Uh, or day three, day four, so like four days. And then it's moving on to something new. So you'll have the same poem. And this is just a really fun way of doing spelling with your kids while still being creative, getting re in reading practice. So, so many different animals. Yeah, I think my daughter's going to love this. This is going to be a lot of fun. So going all the way through so many different, oh, what does it have in the back here? Use some of these words to make a comic. Use some of these words, yep, to make a comic, which is awesome. Write words in each box. Um, what else here? Draw an animal, write a story about the picture. So, I'm excited to use this. I like different and out of the box um, products to keep our homeschool more fun and interesting. And I'm just gonna show you guys this one. I don't think we're actually going to get to this. This is um, my daughter, my oldest one, is especially creative. And so the Artist Fun Schooling Journal, I bought all of these for like $10 on Amazon when they were having a sale. They have sales all the time. Um, different ones go on sale. And so, um, yeah, when they were having a really big sale just like a month or so ago, I bought a lot of these. So homeschool curriculum, um, handbook for students majoring in art. And I don't know if this is gonna be too difficult for her, so I'm just gonna hang on to it. Um, but it's going to have an art focus. And so it says draw or list six things you want to learn about or art skills you want to develop. You know, you can do this, the books you're going to choose, plans and priorities, um, to-do list, a quote that maybe inspires them, their plans, my goals, and notes. Drawing and reading time, choose a few books from your stack to focus on today, write down and draw what inspires you, set a timer for one hour. And so this will be just a book for older kids in my opinion. Um, and it could be about anything, it doesn't have to be about art. It could literally just be anything that they can do here. Study an artist from Italy, so they're gonna do some research about them. An art challenge on this page, draw a realistic drawing of something in the room with you. Draw the same thing as a cartoon on the next page. Doing your math over here, um, nature study, going outside. And the same thing, so it's going to just repeat. This would be for maybe a middle school or a high school child um, that just really enjoys being creative and drawing. Um, you know, they're coming up with their plans probably with you of what they need to get done for the day or for the week. And they're maybe just doing like one spread in this notebook a day and then they're doing their other curriculum, just documenting whatever they're doing. So study an artist from the 1500s, do an hour of reading, write down what inspired you from that reading, screen time, you know, do a documentary or something and write down what you've learned. Make a comic from the video that you're watching, another art challenge, math, nature study. So again, it's just a really fun way of your child to document what it is they are learning about, moving that information from the short-term memory into the long-term memory because they actually have to think about what they're consuming and put it down on the page. And it just, yeah, it just repeats all the way through until the end. Okay, so 
Because there was such a huge sale on these books when I bought them, I bought these four other books. I do not think I'm going to be using these this year, but I just wanna give you guys an idea of all of the amazing products that Thinking Tree has. Um, if I get to geography, which is my hope this year, um, I saw this the travel dream geography, seven amazing continents. Um, so if we get to geography, which is my sincere hope using um, Jamie Martin's book that I showed you earlier, these will be really fun things to fill out with the kids for library or internet based research. So if they choose Africa, we can write how big it is, how many countries does it have, which oceans surround it, the population, find and color a continent, the continent on the map, um, world wonders of Africa, and so you are researching the world wonders that have that are in Africa and writing about it, illustrating about it. List 14 animals from Africa and draw them. Countries in Africa, there's 55 countries in Africa and so they can label it and draw it here. So I just thought this was just a really cool extra thing that we could use in studying geography, specifically the continents. And so they have it for all of, for every single continent. And so I thought this was really cool. Next up, I got Life Skills Activity Book for Active and Creative Kids, a step-by-step -step guide. This one was really interesting. This would be something fun to do. Um, you know, little things you may have never even thought about teaching your kids. And so basic first aid, laundry, sewing, um, conversing on the phone, write a thank you note, meal planning, shopping list, public speaking, to be a good friend, online safety, make your bed, start a small business, food storage, meet new people, how to clean a bathroom, care for a house pet, table manners and etiquette, ironing clothes, using a dictionary and a thesaurus, change a light bulb, apologize, study for a test, time management with a morning routine, take care of your teeth, using a tape measure, schedule an appointment, read a map, make a cup of tea, host a garage sale, give a foot massage, find a book in the library, tie a tie, use a knife safely, pump gas in a car, wrap a gift, crochet. So maybe all of these will apply, maybe none of these will apply, but um, what I thought was interesting is as you're going through this, so the first skill, basic first aid, draw, so you're gonna go and you're gonna get a book on the topic, you're gonna watch a video, you're gonna, um, so it doesn't have to necessarily be a book, but you can watch YouTube videos, you can get books, whatever. Take notes from the books or videos about how to handle the following, cuts or scrapes, bloody noses, first degree burns, and they're gonna write down how you would handle that. Um, bumps or bruise, allergic reaction or concussion. Um, and then watch a video or read about when and how to call 911, list some situations you learn about which you should call for help. And so you can use this really for any age. Maybe if your kids are younger, you don't want them writing in this book and you can bring it back later. Um, it's completely up to you. But how to do laundry, understanding like different types of fabric, um, doing the research and looking up how do you wash those kinds of things? How do you get those stains out? So your children are actually going to have to do the work possibly with you if they're not able to search the internet themselves um, or read, but they're learning these skills. They're trying it out. Um, how cool would it be to have a piece of fabric, put all, this, all these stains on there and then actually try to wash them out? Um, using, however, methods to clean. And so this could be as simple or as creative as you want it to be. Um, sewing, 
learning how to sew a cape into buttons, how to converse on a telephone. Has your child ever ordered a pizza from the phone or are they all using apps now? It could be good to know how to do that. Um, so yeah, this was just a really fun, really different um, thing that maybe you didn't think about including in your homeschool. I got Learn Any Foreign Language, a handbook for students. And so again, this is a completely independent way of learning a language. Topics covered, like basically everything <laughs> um, for learning a language. Watching a film in a foreign language and, or Let's see. So movie time, watch a film, documentary, or a YouTube video in your language that you want to learn. Write down 10 words you hear while watching the film. And so you would write the foreign language and then write it in English. So they're gonna be studying that. Foods, you'd write it down in your foreign language and then in English, you're researching about it. You can use Google Translate if you want. What I thought was really interesting was when I was in Europe and I was in Holland, um, I was talking to some friends there and they watch all of their television in English. So all of, you know, they're watching all these American shows um, because that is how people in Holland, I mean, not exclusively, but how they really, immerse themselves in a language was by watching television in the English language um, to learn it better. So I thought that was really interesting. And so this is just a really different way to learn a different language. Words that you want to know, phrases, make your own text. I mean, it's all very creative. Again, if this appeals to you, get it, use it. It's just your way of documenting how you're learning a new language. And lastly, um, this looked really cool. The, t the top 30 grammar mistakes, a do-it-yourself homeschooling journal. Um, another fun way of doing grammar and to like hand this off to your kid, an older child. This would be for an older child, middle school to high school, in my opinion. Um, on, you know, learning some grammar topics. And so let's see, how do I know when to use effect or effect? And so they tell you, you know, the proper grammar and why you would use effect or effect and then examples and then they have to write, you know, a, write a silly rhyme sentence or another way to help you remember this rule. So how do I know when to use already or already? I mean, these are things I haven't even thought about. It's just really creative. How do I know when to use a lot? a lot or a lot. <laughs> How do I know when to use buy, buy, or buy? How do I know when to capitalize? So yeah, this is really fun. Um, definitely, I would say more for your middle school kids, being that it really wants you to kind of write it out, but it doesn't mean that a younger child won't get the gist by just explaining it to them if you have a larger family. How do I know when to use com compliment or compliment? I or me, into or into, it's or it's, new or new, lie or, l or lay or lie. Um, how do I write a friendly letter? That's good. A lot of kids have no idea how to write a letter anymore. Um, I used to write letters to my aunts and uncles and cousins all the way through high school. It was just a really fun way. Um, how do I write a formal letter to the governor or other important people? This is excellent. 
formal business letter format? How do I address an envelope? How do I know to use lose or lose? Ooh, Mr., Mrs., Miss, or Miss. That's a real common mistake. So yeah, these are just really cool. Um, copy work, book title, let's see. What does it do when you get kind of back here? How do I know nine practice pages? How do I know when to use a colon or a semicolon? And so here are some practice pages, weather or weather. Okay. And then some extra copy pages. What is this? Using this picture as your writing prompt, write a story using one or more of the grammar rules. That's cool. So yeah, again, this is just really fun way of documenting your child's learning. All right, you guys, I hope you found this video helpful in some resources that you may want to use for your own kids this coming school year, but also thinking outside the box of what things can you combine for your kids? How can you make your school year more exciting by adding in outside classes and online resources and how to be more interest led with your kids? If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Blessings on your new and upcoming school year. Bye-bye.